Hey, hey, how's it? This is Tucker coming at you from beautiful Blackcomb Mountain. I've been here in Whistler for the past week. I thought I would take a uh, hike up Blackcomb Mountain. So thanks for joining me today. As some of you know, outside of my business where I help people with their own vacation rental companies, help them launch them and scale them. I also am a contractor for a high-end luxury villa experience company where I go and I host homes and experiences for guests. This week, I am up here in Whistler, the home of Whistler Black Home Ski Resort, where you can do all wonderful things like skiing, mountain biking, snowboarding, mountaineering, paragliding, all sorts of fun adventure activities. And uh, this is my first day off this week, so I wanted to take a hike up the mountain. I had a really amazing week hosting a corporate event at a beautiful home that overlooked this very mountain. So every single day I'd wake up, go host this experience and stare at the face of this mountain saying, I just cannot wait to get up there. And uh, unfortunately I leave tomorrow, but I had to squeeze one day in at the mountain. It's early enough for it to still be quiet. It is late in the season where the mountain isn't overrun by mountain bikers who would be streaming down this single track right here. The great thing is plenty of space on this mountain to share. So I'm gonna get to it when I get to the top and share the view. I'll share a little bit of my experience, how it's been going this week and some of my takeaways. Come enjoy this with me. Thanks for stopping in. Be bear aware. Cheaters, Just taking the easy way up. Of course I'm kidding about that. It doesn't matter how you get up, just as long as you get out and explore to appreciate this gorgeous view. Do it any way you can. And just as I said that, I passed by a ground nest of yellow jackets and got stabbed by one of them. Oh, I wasn't even bothering him, what the heck? Oh well, can't do anything about it now. Let's just keep going. Would you look at that? It's the gondola and the summit. I won't be making it to the summit of Black Comb today. It's a little far out of my reach. I'd say it's still worth the climb. Yeah, yeah, it's worth it. There you have it. That's the climb up to the top of the Black Comb ski area. As you can see, you can go much further to the summit and there are trails to get up there. There are a little bit more mountaineering trails, but uh, that was the alpine hiking section. <sighs> Feels good to get out today after working seven days straight. Yeah, this is the top of Blackcomb Mountain. Well, technically that's the summit, but this is the top of the ski area. And over there is Whistler. Behind me, you can see a marmot munching on some grass. The mountain of Whistler is named after the whistling marmots that, uh, that make these mountains their home and they have a high-pitched whistling screech 
that they call to each other. Maybe we'll hear one while we're up here. Behind me, I have the Peak to Peak tram, which goes from the Blackcomb Summit over to the Whistler Summit. Unfortunately, this time of year, it only runs on the weekends, and I didn't have any time on the weekends. Uh, that's too bad. I'll, like, have to come back. My brother's been up here a few times and he raves about this mountain. He told me to take the tram. He says it's a real, uh, real f nail biter, knuckle biter. It's scary. Sadly, I won't get it. So I get to experience the mountain this way. Uh, and then over my shoulder here, we have coming up the mountain, all this evidence uh, branding that says 29029. Um, that is the Everest challenge, the 29,029 foot Everest challenge. And it's a series of races that goes around to, um, to extreme locations like ski mountains, like alpine locations that have extreme elevation gain. And what they do is they simulate an experience of climbing the summit of Everest over the course of a period of time. So uh, th this I think is a 4,000 foot gain. Uh, so whatever 29,000 feet divided by 4,000 feet, say it's eight times, seven times. You climb this mountain seven times and you effectively climb the summit of Everest. So I've never done it, but it was cool coming up and doing one leg and seeing it. I've, I've heard about it for many years. And I use this time after my bookings are done, after my contracts are done, to reflect on the experience, to reflect on the, the work that I do on location, both as a contractor and as a, a business owner, somebody who still aims to maintain consistency in his business. And a few of my takeaways from this week, just on this one, is to give myself grace for the work that I have to do on my own while I'm here. Usually when I'm on the ground, the days are long and it's hard work working with and for clients. So I, I don't wanna push myself too much by finishing a long day and then having to do four or five more hours late, late into the night of my own work. Uh, yes, I periodically have to do that, but I try and give myself a little bit of margin so that I can, I don't burn myself out after the end of a trip, that I can see it through the end and still have a little energy and gas in my tank to feel like I can both enjoy myself while I'm here and still serve my clientele the way that they need to. And another takeaway that I like to reflect on and takes periodic reminding is uh, that these are not holidays. These are not vacations for me. And even though I get to come to amazing places like this, it is for work. And I have to remember that, that if I come here and I spend eight full days of long, hard days, and I feel like I'm this close to an amazing destination, that I am in heaven on earth. Let's rotate so you can see a little bit better background here. You can see the mountains off in the distance. That I can give myself the time that I have to do to do the work, and then also a day, maybe a day and a half to say, yes, now go appreciate it. If I have time in the evenings, I'll go for a local jog, I will go for a hike. I'll find a, find a fun pub or a library or a cafe to hole up after work for maybe an hour or two. I give myself those times within the margin so that I don't feel like I'm, that I'm coming here and losing, uh, losing out on anything. But the priority for myself while I'm here is work. Oh, there's two of them. Yeah. <laughs> They're pretty cute. And as long as I get into the mindset of that, I handle my time here pretty well, that I don't feel like I'm ever missing out. That it's okay, that I can still get a day and then hopefully one day come back and experience the fullness of what it is. Uh, and the third is to hold on to my daily rhythms, my habits that I have. It is so easy when I am traveling for work to shut off all that stuff when I have my, uh, my work schedule to to let that supersede my normal rhythms. So I fall out of my normal sleep patterns, especially if there's a time change. That means eating healthy. It means communicating regularly with the people that I care about. It means tracking my time and being responsive in my communication. It also means being present in the here and now so that I'm not getting ahead of myself of what I hope to be doing when I'm done or what I may have forgotten to do when I leave. All these things are, are habits and daily rhythms that I try and infuse in my day and can be easy to shut off when you're at a destination for work. 
it takes you away from your normal life. Also to give yourself a little bit of grace when you might be in a place that might have its own challenges, the unknowns of a, of a location. So yes, hold on to your habits, but also give yourself the grace regardless of what that might mean. So those are my three little takeaways that I just was reflecting on on my hike up here. So as I'm sitting here and sharing this with you, if you do happen to travel for work uh, and have any takeaways for how you continue in your habits, in your daily rhythms, uh, keeping yourself motivated and positive, maybe even connected with the people back home, I would love to hear about it. Drop a note in the comments below or send me an email, share your story and share your thoughts with me. I'm going to be hopping on the gondola back down to the base of the mountain for some lunch. And thanks for joining me today. I'll catch you next time.